Do you ever come back and sit in those rooms and say, the crew chief, the driver, and the engineer might have been at three different races? Because I, I used <laughs> yeah. to come back, with, with this car especially, I would come back and say, okay, where, where did you get that from? And I don't understand how you watch this race and listen to everything that we said and wrote that down. Mm -hmm. And and do you do you come back sometimes and, yeah. and wonder if we were at the same race? Um, I mean, sometimes not not that often. Um, I'd say my team does a really good job. You know, I'm I'm there a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm there. You know, the garage opens. I am there. I, I don't want to miss. I don't want to miss one of these questions come up. You know, there's a lot of times I'm just sitting in the lounge and Absolutely. I'll just be going over things, but we're not talking to each other until a question comes up. And if I, is so many times I think, gosh, if I wasn't there to answer that question, we would have made the wrong decision. And not, not of anyone's fault besides me just being lazy, right? That would be the only reason why I wouldn't be there. Uh, so I just, when I go to the racetrack, I'm, I'm going racing. And when I go home, I'm going home. Don't bother me when I go home, but I'm going to be 100% when I'm at the track or when I'm at work, at the shop or whatever. That's that's my time to to make sure we have everything right because everything everything goes off of results. Everything else that goes on in your work, my work life is off of results. And unfortunately, sometimes it's your personal life, right? Because yeah. sometimes you take that anger home and you're mad, but it all goes off of results. So you have to put all into that. So how do you balance all that, right? You have three kids, you have yeah. wife, um, you've been around the sport. Maybe I should ask you. For a long time. Yeah. It's, well, I'm asking because it's, you know, I think it's it's important for some of the young kids that'll listen to this interview and and say, oh, well, that's that's more important than I thought it was because that circle of life, right, is is hard to balance. And and you you do it well. Um, you you were able to go compete. You're great with your family. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of business outside of of what you do. What has that changed at all with the requirements that that come with this car, and and how do you how yeah. do you balance it all? It's gotten harder. There's more requirements with this car now than there used to be with the old car, just because everything is just closed up, right? The details matter more now than they used to. Yeah. You used to be able to get away with mediocre rolling times on pit road, or you know you had a fast enough car that you can make things happen on restarts. Now everything's like the same. So how are you going to get better than the next guy? You just got to outwork them. Right, I mean, everybody's pretty dang talented at this point. The advantage of racing for years in the Cup Series isn't there anymore because that car was so unique. You had an advantage. Now, nope. Everyone's new to this car. Everyone's got the same amount of experience in this car in the last three years. So you just got to be willing to outwork them. Yeah, I think it's the only way you can do it. Um, that just means you got to cut out the things that aren't important. Yeah. And. You know, if you ask me, I, do, do I go golfing? No, I don't go golfing. I don't, it's, I go racing, I go to work, the things that matter, and then I go home and do the things that matter, right? And that's just being with my family, right? I just be with the kids, be a dad, be a good husband. Um, now I got a fantastic wife that like, she gets it and we, we figure it out and we do, a, we do a good job trying to do it. But I mean, you know how it is, like your, your wife is, the most important decision you ever make in your life is who you marry. Yes, it is. And because that person, especially in our way we live, she's raising her kids by herself a lot of times. Um, so when I'm home, it's 100% of the times with them. Don't call me. <laughs> like, right. I'm, I'm going home. I, I try to go home around four every day. And I don't do that every day, but I try. And when I get home, I'll, I'm not answering my phone. Not until you know, seven o'clock the next morning. Right. I drop them off at of school. Okay, I'm back to work. That's just, and, and you do that every single day and then you do it at, you know, at the racetrack and that's at least the best way I figured out how to balance it is just to do 100% at everybody. whatever you're doing. It's, yeah, I mean, it does yeah. a little, I mean, everybody has their own nuances, but I, I find that, I find that very much uh, how I did it when when I drive. If you don't set those hard lines with the, with the family, it it just becomes overwhelming. Yeah, and then to try like to manage it all, and then they get frustrated. And I wouldn't blame. Them. Like I would be frustrated. You know, it's just like they want to hang out with dad, or you you got to have a date night, you know, and reconnect with your wife. That stuff's very important. It's really the most important thing. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest, because someday we're gonna stop racing and. I don't know what happens next, but eventually you just kind of, it's going to be, what, what was all that for, yeah. right? If you, if you retire without a good relationship with your family, you're going to be depressed because all you had was racing. 
And when that goes away, you got nothing. And like that, you can't have that. That's like your happiness for the rest of your life. So you see a lot of these kids coming in a like, lot like you did, right? They're coming in, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old. Does that shorten that driver span, you think, with the work level, the way that it is now? Um, because of of the fact that the the load that it puts on you, or does it is it you think it's still different for different people? Because like I feel yeah. like you can manage more than most because of your experience and your approach to things. Yeah, um, stumped you, didn't I? I've never thought of it that way. I don't know, yeah. right? I mean, like I'm 16 years in right now to the cup to cup racing, and like that's a that's a full career. Yeah, to to a lot of people, right? I mean. Not everyone races as long as you did, Kevin. How many years did you, you race will. for? Yeah, 23 in the country. 23. Series. God bless. <laughs> I hear that and I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. But, but well, it becomes this balance, right? Because the next thing you do, you got to go through, okay, well, how long do I think I'm going to live? And and how many, what's the what's the number that I want to live yeah, off of? Yeah, you right. have this whole yeah. retirement thing that you have to, that you have to, um, that start you have thinking to, about. have to figure out. And it's not a, yeah. a lot of people want to do it in a one or two year process. That's a, that's an every year, five year plan, constant process. Right. And I, I want to say if I can't win, I don't want to do it. Yeah. Because I, I like winning more than I, I like racing. Like the racing part's okay, but the winning part's the only reason why I do it. Like I can find joy in doing other things besides running mid pack in a cup race. Yeah. Just if that's what I got to do and I'm holding back my race team. I'm out. Yeah. Cause I just don't, I just don't want to do that. I, I can find joy. Like I said, doing other things, I can find ways to win in business or in other stuff that I can get that competitive vibe. But eventually if you keep getting your butt kicked every week, you're going to be like, screw this. I'm going to go do something else. Yeah, especially <laughs> you know, you've done it for as long as you have. Exactly. So what is so. the path? Like if you said, okay, I raced legend car, bandoleros, legend cars, late models, is that mm-hmm. the right path? If you if you had to do it again through through your path, knowing what cup is now, what would you change? Like, tell us, tell us, tell us your path, and then tell us what. Yeah, you so do yeah, my path. So I started in quarter midgets um, in Connecticut, and then I moved down to Atlanta, ran Bandoleros, Legends cars, um, late models, and then you know the ASA Hooters Pro Cup, kind of those things, and then eventually got a um, to ride in, for, with Gibbs. My path was a little different than at the time, but now every kid's doing it, yeah. right? Like I was the youngest to drive a late model. I was the youngest to do, like I was driving a Legends car at nine. You know, nobody was driving a Legends cars at nine. Right? I, had, I had to lie about my age to do it, you know? <laughs> like now you can race yeah. at that age. And so all the things that I did that was so crazy because I was so young is now the norm. Kids are racing late models at 12, 13 years old now. Mm-hmm. And it's not even like, oh, there's a few of them doing it. It's not like there's just one kid doing that. I was the one kid right. doing all this stuff, waiting on my birthday to move up to the next level. And the, the thing that my dad did really good at was always moving me up before I felt like I was ready. Mm-hmm. Right? Like I never stayed in a division long enough to where I dominated. It was always like, okay, you figured it out, move up. Like as soon as we start winning, it was always do that. And I think a lot of this, you're only as good as the competition you're competing against. So I think that was a, a key piece to it. Um, but we always had fun doing it. I think that was the most important part to yeah. all of it was that, you know, we, we didn't, my dad was an eraser. He didn't know what the heck he was doing. We, but we just would go and figure it out. And it's different today because we owned our car. We worked on our car. We didn't have to compete against these teams. Right now, you look at Legends car racing, go karts. You know, Paul Wolf's kid races go karts. You know, you hear about some of the stuff. Keelan, same thing. They, they they're all part of teams right. where like all this you know data is collected and they help you know they, they show up to the racetrack and go drive the car and then afterwards they go home. And I'm used to like showing up with our trailer and we unload everything and if we wrecked it, well we go back and we fix it. <laughs> like yeah. it's just that's what we were used to everybody did that way. There wasn't another option. Um, But now it doesn't seem like you can be competitive doing it that way. Hey, 
Hey, race fans, thanks for watching our video. For all NASCAR on Fox News content and the best clips from Fox Sports, be sure to follow and subscribe to our channel.